Um, okay, everyone, almost everyone is back from lunch, so I think we can start with the second part of today's conference. Uh, in the morning sessions, we hope to give you an idea of what data journalism is and what is possible. And in the afternoon sessions, we will be looking into more detail into how to get started with using data for reporting. Uh, to remind you, I am Liliana Bonegru. I am a project manager working on data journalism for the European Journalism Center. Uh, the center is one of Europe's leading training networks for journalists. It operates all over the world and its job is basically to identify cutting edge practices in media and spread the knowledge and build the capacity for more journalists around the world to practice them. I will quickly talk you through a few free online resources that we produced and that I think might be useful if you want to look further into this topic. Um, and I will start with the website. Uh, in 2010, we organized what was said to be one of the first international conferences on data journalism. And seeing uh, the great amount of interest in that conference and in the topic, we decided to set up a website where anyone could find out about the latest developments in the field, including uh, relevant events, tutorials, case studies, and interviews with data journalism uh, practitioners and advocates. Uh, we have uh, leading data journalists sit on the editorial board of this website, including from the New York Times, The Guardian, NPR, and Deutsche Welle. In order to encourage collaboration uh, and exchange of knowledge between everyone interested in data journalism, either programmers, designers, journalists, or open data enthusiasts, we set up a mailing list, a public mailing list. And over 800 people signed up to the mailing list so far, and anyone is free to join. And uh, sorry about that. So here is uh, the URL for the website and also where you can find details about the mailing list and can sign up if you wish. The second resource that I'd like to mention and one of the most exciting projects we've been working on so far is the Data Journalism Handbook. Uh, we published the handbook at the end of April and uh, the handbook is a free collaborative open source reference book for anyone interested in this topic. This project started life at, uh, in a two-day book sprint at the Mozilla Festival in London last November, where we invited anyone who was an expert in the field to help us write this manual. The task was quite ambitious. We planned to have the book ready in two days. And as it turns out, it was too ambitious because it took us in the end six months to, <laughs> to complete the book. Um, uh, the project is coordinated by the European Journalism Center and the Open Knowledge Foundation and benefited from the wisdom of over 70 contributors from many news organizations around the world, including the Financial Times, the New York Times, the BBC, the Guardian, Washington Post, uh, ProPublica, and many others. So if after two days at the Mozilla Festival, we had around 60 pages 20, and 20,000 words from 55 contributors, after six months, we've made great progress and collected over 250 pages, uh, over 60,000 words from over 70 contributors. So the book is for anyone who is interested in this topic, either a programmer, a graphic designer, or a journalist. It's, it is not a comprehensive resource for learning to do data journalism. It won't tell you everything you need to know to do data journalism, but it will give you a good sense of where to, how to get started and where to go if you want to look further. The book answers questions like, 
what is data journalism, what have people done in this field, and how to get started. From where to find data, how to request data, what tools to use, and how to find stories in data. Yeah. I will very quickly talk you through the structure of the book so you can get a better sense of what you can find out from the book. Uh, the introduction uh, tell, uh, tells us what data journalism advocates and pra practitioners uh, think that data journalism is and why they think it's important. The second chapter is in the newsroom. In this chapter, we find out how data journalism sits within news organizations such as the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, The Guardian, the BBC, and many others. We also have a look at sustainability and business models, as well as what are the inspiring examples. So once you've got a sense of uh, what data journalism is and what people have done in this field, the second part of the book focuses on how to get started. And the first step is getting data. Uh, in this chapter, you'll find out how to get data by using freedom of information laws, by getting, uh, getting data from the web, by scraping, using open data portals, and also how to crowdsource data collection. The next step is understanding data. And in this chapter, you will learn how to make sense of your data. You will learn tips and tricks for working with numbers and statistics, as well as uh, what are the data journalists' favorite tools for data analysis. The last chapter is delivering data. In this chapter, data journalists from different news organizations present various ways of presenting data stories, either by serving data with stories, uh, by building news apps, or data visualizations. And lastly, we learn how to engage communities with our data projects. So the book is freely available online. It's published under a Creative Commons Attribution Share-Alike license, which means that anyone is free to copy, redistribute, and reuse the book. A printed version and an ebook will be made available by O'Reilly Media by the end of this month. And we've got incredibly positive feedback after the release of the book. The book is already being used by universities in journalism courses and in trainings. There is also great interest in translations. And if anyone here is interested or is able to support us for doing a German translation, come speak to me in one of the breaks, or if you have any ideas how we might get support for doing a German translation. And actually, the first translation will also be published by the end of th this month. It's a translation in Russian, uh, done by the Russian press agency RIA Novosti. Uh, you can find uh, the handbook at datajournalismhandbook.org, where, where is also where the translations will be published. Uh, there are two last resources that I'd like to mention. Uh, this year, together with the Global Editors Network, we established the first International Data Journalism Awards. Uh, the winners were announced uh, at the end of May, and two of them are with us today, Alistair Dunt and Bella Hurl. Well, actually, they're still at lunch. Uh, oh, Bella is over there. <laughs> um, so congratulations again. Uh, in autumn, we will uh, launch the second edition of the awards. And on this occasion, we will publish the full database of entries for this competition. Uh, the database will contain uh, detailed information about how these projects were created. And we think that this will be a tremendous resource for anyone who is trying to understand uh, the development of data journalism in different parts of the world, as well as its impact and what are the best practices. So the database will be published uh, on the website of the competition, datajournalismawards.org. 
The last resource that I'd like to mention is a list of tip sheets and tutorials. During the several workshops, trainings, and conferences that we organized on this topic, we collected a lot of useful materials, a lot of tip sheets and video recordings from the sessions, which uh, we made freely available online for everyone. Uh, they are all uploaded on the Data Hub under the Data Journalism Group, and this is the URL where you can find uh, video recordings from other um, trainings that we organized as well as uh, tutorials. So uh, thank you. This is how you can get in touch if you have any questions or suggestions or if there's any way in which we can, we can help. And uh, to remind you, if you're tweeting about this conference, please use the DDJ hashtag. So thank you. Thank you, Liliana. Liliana.